So my family is in town and we're going shelling. So last year my parents moved to Florida and part of the reason I started this channel was so that we can still go shelling together. So I never expected anybody else to be watching this channel. I thought it was just my mom and her Mahjong crew. I was shocked the other day when I saw I had 100 subscribers. So thank you so much for watching my channel. We're going to be hitting the beach. We'll see if we can find any leftover shells from the storm and see what else got kicked up. We found a live scale. Oh, well, let's see. Awesome. So this is the operculum. That's like a little door that when they go, they close up inside. It keeps them safe from anything that any other predators that want to eat it. Oh. Yep. So. What do we do when we find anything live at the beach? We put it back in the water. So the operculum is the, uh, the, like, the little front door. It's actually Latin for little lid. And that is what keeps the moon sail safe from any of its predators. Once that closes, it makes it very difficult for anything to get in and get in. It's a really nice mussel shell that's intact. You can see the adductor muscle is still inside there. You can see all the beautiful barnacle that's on the outside of it. And a lot of people don't know this, but barnacle is actually alive. A lot of these are dead, because you can see a lot of the barnacle holes are empty. But the ones that you see where there's the inside piece to that barnacle, those actually come out with little tentacles. Um, and they, the tentacles actually grab all of the microorganisms and plankton in the water, and that's what they feed on. Barnacle is intertidal, which means they close and they can actually live for a really long time without having any water because when they close up, they hold the moisture in, similar to moon snails. A lot of times when I find pockets like this, I like to get down close and see what I can pull out of it. I mean, look at the size of this moon snail. How adorable is that? How cute is that? Very, very tiny. Awesome basket whelk. I mean, look at that. Look at the detail. It's a New England basket whelk. And I mean, it does look like a little weave basket. <laughs> it looks just like that. It's a good find. Okay, so this is, this is the dog whelk or dog winkle. They come in different colors. They come in whites, creams, browns. Um, I've even seen some light red ones, but uh, these guys are the ones that eat mussels. So just like the moon snail, they have a little radula inside of them that comes out and drills a hole right through the shell of the mussel. Um, it, so it's a carnivore and it eats other marine mollusks. So this is a dog whelk. So a lot of time the seaweed bundles wash up and I like to move them and see what I can find underneath them really nice piece of moon snail. I mean, look at the colors on that. Look at the way that the sun is hitting it. It's really gorgeous. Let's see what else we can find under here. I feel like if I was a seahorse that got kicked up in a storm, this is where I would be hiding. Okay, so here is a good specimen. So this is a mussel shell. Again, it is a bivalve. Um, it has a lot of barnacle. Um, the barnacle looks like it has expired on it. But you can see here, there's a little tiny hole and it's very similar to the hole that the moon snails drill into the clams and other mollusks. This hole right here was probably made by a dog whelk. So the food of choice for a dog whelk is actually a mussel. What you got? Ooh, that is very nice. That's an awesome Stimsonis whelk. Nice find. <laughs> nice. It's a great shell. So a lot of people don't know this, but the Plum Island Wildlife Refuge is actually divided into four towns and it's 11 miles of coastline. So it's divided between Newbury, Newburyport, Rowley, and Ipswich. It just keeps going and going and going and going. So we're gonna have a lot to explore together. Nice piece of glass. It has some really cool etchings on the bottom of it. It's gonna make a really nice piece of sea glass for someone. 
I'm gonna uh, toss it back in the ocean so it gets a little bit more tumbled. It's not quite done yet, but that's gonna make a really nice, it's gonna be a really nice find for someone. So what did you find here, Tracy? So I found a scallop shell, but I don't understand why it's really thick, do you? That is an oyster shell. Oh. So, do you see how they grow? It looks like layers and layers and layers and layers. Yeah. Um, you know how when you count a tree ring and you can tell how many years they've been alive? That's the same thing you can do with a shell. So if you start at the base, you can estimate the age of a shell by how many growth rings it has. That is super cool. What do you got here? Wow, look at the size of these moon snails. Yeah. Uh, are much, they alive? No, these ones are empty, but I put about four or five back that were big as this that had little guys in them. That were alive? Yeah, and I don't know what that that's is. That's a Simpsonis Wilk. So oh. that's that's a good shell. That's a deep water shell. So it looks like a lot of them have been washing up since the storm, the last nor'easter that we had, which is pretty cool. Yeah, those are great. Good size, too. That's a nice color. These are great finds, Tracy. Thank you. It's exciting. You never know what you're gonna find. Never know what you're gonna find. This is also a very nice piece of sea coal. Very nice piece of sea coal. You can see how it lusters like that. I love it. That's awesome. He's got all the spines and what is a hook on this. Got a hook on the lure. Oh. Wow. Someone must have lost the whole tackle for us. I found about six, seven lures. A bunch of lures out there? Wow. Yeah. Those are nice. You gotta keep them? Yeah. Yeah, look at this guy. Actually, is it a guy or a girl? Looks like looks like a male. I think it is a male. Yeah, you can tell because the front end of it has the curvature. But he's really interesting. And he's sun-dried, too. That would make a really nice specimen. So we hit a sweet little pocket down here. There are a lot of moons in this pocket. Some of them are alive, some of them are not. Some have expired. So any of the live ones we're tossing back into the ocean. Um, we did also find um, a common whelk which is a univalve gastropod, meaning one shell, and it's a whirl shell. These are edible. These are deep water, so uh, I don't find many of them in their entirety, but uh, this is a good find. So again, it's a common whelk, otherwise known as a waved whelk. This is a very beautiful baby quahog. And uh, you can see it is closed and it's still alive. I'm gonna put it back in the ocean, but it has some really interesting markings on it, and it's beautiful. So the tide's actually going out right now, and I love the tide lines and how the water runs off from the beach. It's really mesmerizing. And I'm really glad with the magic of the interwebs, I can take you with me today. We got a rope here that we're gonna follow. Follow it, follow it, follow it. Where does it lead? To another lobster buoy over here. And you can see the uh, a number of the lobstermen etched straight into the back of them right there. This is cool. This is a, a horse mussel. It's a pretty large bivalve. They have beautiful insides. The shell on the inside is actually really beautiful. It has a rainbow or an iridescent look to it. But again, these are horse mussels. Very large, a lot of periostractin on the outside of them. Starting to weather and peel off. But look at the way that the sun hits that on the inside. It's very rainbowy. Eh? It's beautiful. Horse mussel. So you got here. Okay. Yeah, so this is a moon snail and you can see inside. See those little shells inside? A lot of them, they're like limpets or slipper shells, and they go ahead and they attach themselves to the insides of other other shells and other 
sea creatures. But if we rinsed it out, we can probably get a better look. But uh, but yeah, those look like slipper shells and limpets that are attached on the inside of this moon snail. So we found some really interesting things. And um, again, thanks for watching my videos. Remember to subscribe and I will see you next time we hit the beach.